What is up guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup here and today I'm going to be doing a more of an in-depth review of the Personas Revelator IO24. But for this review, what I really wanted to do was focus on actually quite a bit of all the tweaks and changes and things that I would do to this product. I in no way want to, you know, make the product look bad because it is a fantastic audio interface. It's got very nice preamps if you're using dynamic microphones, something like the RE320 or the Shure SM7B, Rode Procaster, all of those sort of mics. It can drive without a fat head, um, which is very good. Um, and then it's also got some great built-in features as well. So we've got a full built-in DSP where we've got things like high-pass filters, gates, expanders, multiple compressors, multiple EQs, um, hard limiters. <laughs> There's so much stuff here. Um, you know, voice effects, so many things that you can use this for. And then it has a built-in mixer in it as well with multiple loopbacks so we can send different audios to our friends on Discord or Teams or whatever. They can hear their own audio mix. And then we just press one button and it sends an entire stream mix. And then we've got our own headphone mix. It's a fantastic audio interface, but I feel there's just some little tweaks and things that I would like to change on it. So I'm going to show you all of that today. I'm going to take you all the way through it. We're also going to, I'm going to address the the headphone issue, the noisy headphone issue a little bit in this video, but I do plan to make a separate video on that to go through those um, complaints that some users have been having as well with you. Some of the fixes, some of the changes, you know, but really this is something that personas need to fix. But before we get to all of that greatness and all of that goodness, all of the stuff that I've got to show you today, um, I want to say a massive thanks to today's sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Now, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes to get your creative juices flowing. Whether it's design, photography, video, or just upskilling your Microsoft Office skills, you can guarantee that Skillshare has a class for you. Now, this past month, I've been extremely busy and the last few weeks have ended up in a complete new career change for me. But that doesn't mean that I don't have time to learn new skills. And when my schedule is absolutely chock-a-block, Skillshare offer a fantastic Android and ISO apps that allow me to download their classes to my smartphone or tablet. This means that I can keep up with all of their great content whilst on the move and traveling. Honestly, I think you will love everything that Skillshare has to offer and they have kindly offered for my first 1,000 subscribers to join one month's free Skillshare premium. So definitely go and check all of that out. Absolutely love using Skillshare. So should we take a look at the Presonis audio interface then? Let's take you in for a closer look. Let's have a look at the interface before we have a look at the software. So what I wanted to start with is looking at it from a hardware perspective, okay? So things that would change, things that I really like, you know, things that I don't like, okay? I love that it's got two XLR inputs and I love that there's a companion app, okay? For a lot of people, you're going to say the reason you'd want to go for the Go XLR is because you need to be able to control your device. It doesn't matter how many good loopback features that it's got and audio mixer type features that it's got. If you can't dial it in with your hand while you're streaming, then it's a bust. Now, obviously, there's the cost of the iPad on top. If you get compared buying an iPad brand new and the Revelator, you're way over go XLR money but the chances are you might have an older iPad and it works on Android tablets as well it's not as well supported um, so if you have any devices that you're running it with let us know in the description um, comment section and if you have any that hasn't worked with you know let us know in the comment section as well but I love the iPad app you can literally control everything on it doesn't matter what you do where you want to go you can do all your fat channel you can recall your scenes Go into all your settings. You can change everything on all your mixers, change your headphone outputs. All of that stuff is all there. The only issue I have with it, and I don't know if this is just my system. I don't know if it's my iPad. This is a seventh, or I think it's a seventh generation iPad, which you can get relatively cheap now. Um, but when you change these, look, as you can see on the screen behind me, it's not changing through on stuff. It's all just staying where it is. So you have to have some trust, okay? There has to be some trust, you know, in that you're dialing it in. And anything that you dial in on here, let's just go to loopback one. And I'll just turn the volume right up on there. And then if I come over here to loopback one, you can see, look, it's dialed in that setting. It's up. No. So as long as you're on the same one, it does it in real time, but it doesn't switch between screens. So that's my only annoyance with it. And I'd like to know if that's something that you're all you know suffering from as well okay then over to the actual audio interface then um it's going to be a bit hard to move this around because i've got it plugged in at the back and at the front as well so like i said i love the two xlr inputs 
will these 60 db gain um xlr inputs power and sm7b without a fat head yes they do of course there is going to be a little bit of hiss in there of course there is always an argument to use a fat head or a cloud lifter but these preamps have more than enough juice okay i'm using the re320 at the moment i think i'm at about 45 db gain sounds very nice indeed personally i always prefer these to be on the back and i want my headphone jack on the freaking front you're going to focus yeah so you've got your main outputs midi and usb-c doesn't come with a usb-c cable which i think is a massive con and the usb-c to type a cable is very short now i bought the Presonus studio 24c which is cheaper than this device and you included both cables so i don't know what you're doing there and then you've got your you know your balance main outputs let's talk headphone output then it's good but there are problems with it there is actually someone that's been commenting on my loopback videos that he's sent back a unit and then he's had another one come out and it's the same issue. I'm going to be honest with you right now, buddy. With the MDR 7506s on, I can hear the exact same issue as what you posted. There is almost like this little swirling and whirling going on in the headphones and it isn't coming from anywhere else in the device. It's not the microphone, doesn't matter if that's not plugged in. It seems to be with lower impedance headphones. Um, my Fidelio X2 HRs don't do it, and these DT990 250 ohms don't do it, but there is definitely some sort of feedback nastiness coming out of the headphone amp with lower impedance headphones. Do they power the DT90 250 ohms? Yes, exceptionally well. Um, I would say it's in line with the Audion Evo 4, which you might say is a device half the price of this, shouldn't they sound better? That device punches way above its weight in you know how just listening to listening back to it playback and headphone amp power okay um it's not in the same league as the motu m2 you know if you don't want to have like a separate dac and headphone amplifier like you can see behind me there um, and you wanted that all built into an audio interface the motu m2 and m4 are still where to go but it sounds very well um more than enough power for these headphones the only thing that I find is when you're just monitoring, like at the volume I'm monitoring now, is that I would just have to, you know, dial that one up. That would probably be be all that I need to do there is just crank it up when you're, you know, you're coming in at lower volumes. Over to the rest of the front panel then. So you've got your two presets you can dial in, save to DSP, which is awesome. You can save more than two presets anyway, but you can have your two presets here. The mute switch is a bit of a killjoy because it only mutes the monitor outputs out the back. Pressing in the middle here selects your different you know, outputs, headphone output and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and then if you press on the input channel, so I'm going to do channel um, number two, you can then change the gain for this. OK, so you can adjust your gain so you don't have to do it all in software. Um, I think then if you press the middle one, yeah, there you go. If you press the headphone jack there headphone button you can then do 48 volt phantom power and even better you can dial in 80 hertz high pass on the front of the freaking unit wicked so there we go hardware perspective what would i change then so the headphone jack needs to be on the front and the xlrs need to be on the back for me i don't want to reach around the back every time i got to change headphones i understand it in professional studio gear maybe it's because you've got it you know go into another headphone output which is then split into more multiple headphones and all of that sort of stuff but for general prosumer use, we just want a jack in the front persona. So when you re if you ever release a Mark II of this, can you please put the headphone jack on the front? And can you just start doing that with all of your audio interfaces, please? Because us people with more than one headphones would love that. OK, then over to the software then. I love the software. So it's awesome. It's got so many cool features, but there's just so much I would change about this software. OK, just so much that i would change so i think one of the first things um that i want to sort of talk about is this big space here okay i am actually on a 1440p display at the moment so you know you might not have this gap if you open it smaller but this is prime real estate personas for you know effects buttons people that want all of those you know cover your swear words sound effects all of that sort of stuff that's missing from the go go xlr even if you just gave us buttons okay that we could just add our own sound effects in i'm i'm someone that's personally not not really going to use it okay it's it's something that me personally i wouldn't use but i can understand why a lot of you would want that then if you've got a tablet or phone set up and you've got the app you can then hit those buttons you know it'd be great even if it was a separate section on the app so you just have it as a bigger you know if you're using it on the phone all your little squares the next thing is the profiles 
this little spinning wheel that changes all of your profiles. All of this stuff, it's just annoying. I wished for your two presets. So these were the ones where you saw the preset buttons on the front earlier were just a drop down. Okay. This is, you know, it looks cool. Um, the way that all the profiles are, you can save them are good. If you're wondering who Manny is, that's the headphone mannequin that we've done for testing. But here you can see all my different profiles that I've set up for all my microphones that I've got. Starting to look like a bit of a collection now, although I haven't done one from, I've got one space left for my Neumann. One little space left there for local presets. So that's all good. Um, but if you got rid of all of that, you'd have all of this extra space for a big board in here. Okay. And I think that would just be fantastic. I love that you have all these presets here, you know, so you can do preset gates, preset compressors. The good thing is when you set one of these, um, where are we wrong one, it will then change it in the fat channel. So it gives you something as a point of reference to then tweak and change. So I really like that. Keep the presets. But I would also like that, you, you know, maybe I could drop down and I could have my own ones in here. So I could just, you know, drop it in. It's, it's just extra stuff. Um, main out phones, blend, all of that stuff. That's fine. You know, it doesn't need any chain in, change in there. Um, as you can see at the moment, I'm talking through Stream Mix. And I'm going to turn Stream Mix off. And I'm still talking. Everything is still there. That's great. One click button and it takes your mix over. All right. And we're going to get back to all of this mixer stuff in a second. So, yeah, really like all of this stuff. I would just change all of this. And everyone else has said change this as well. Every video I've watched has just said it's a bit easier now. And since the firmware update, it's now numbered. Last time I did a video, they dropped a firmware update the next day. So hopefully they don't do it this time because this video is not actually going live for a couple of weeks. So, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that doesn't happen. You can then go, there's a few other settings in here. So you've got settings up at the top. So you can apply, you know, do you want your fat channel to go to both outputs, output delay, preset buttons, global mute, all of this stuff, assign voice effects. Great. All of that stuff, good. You then have scenes. Scenes are very useful. So when you change your profile, it doesn't remember stuff like your gain, your 48 volts of phantom power, you know, certain things of where your mixer are. This, on the other hand, is a complete, you know, you just press it and it reloads it, reloads the settings for you. So that's fantastic. Let's have a little look at the fat channel then. So the fat channel is where I've got a couple of issues with. Um, it's great, but there is definitely some improvements I would make. Is the tube compressor, is it working? Yeah, a little bit. Let's um, add in a little bit more peak reduction, maybe, maybe a little bit more. I don't know. I'm not sold on the compressors on this yet. So the high pass filter is great. Great that you can cut these high frequencies out, but there's no high shelf. Like you can technically put one in, but then you lose one of your EQ. So I'd love to see them also add in the high shelf frequency. Maybe if somebody you just wanted to cut off from like 16 or 18 K, you can do that. And then it doesn't use one of your EQs. Another thing that's really annoying, which is why I'm going to change to a different profile. We need a blank one. There we go. Blank profile. So I want to look at one of the other EQs. Let's just say we go over to the passive EQ and we want to make some changes in here. There's also a vintage EQ for you to play around with. And then we go back to our standard one. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Disappeared. You know, you spent ages dialing all this in, all your Q settings, and it's gone. That's a bit annoying, isn't it? A bit annoying. Where's the RE320? There we are. There's my. And there we go. We've got it back. And it's exactly the same for the compressors. OK, let me go back. Boom, empty one. And, you know, apply, it keeps your settings for a second. So if we go to the fat one, there we go. It's just, there we go. Click over. I've not got full screen because I've obviously got my face in the way as well. Um, but yeah, you know, go back. Oh, I've lost all my tube settings. Standard compressor. Do you know what I mean? We've, we've lost loads of stuff. Also as well, let's just dial this in at the moment. So if we say, let's just add some extra gain in, because I know we would have dropped some gain there. Um, the compressor as well, I would use this more for live than when you're just doing a normal recording. The problem is, is, you know, when I'm just recording normally, I've got the gain, you know, lower down. You know, I've got less, you know, gain coming in um, because that's the, the signal that I want to record at. I want my peaks to be around minus 18 dB. So it's going to be very hard to get a compressor to kick in there. Now, if you were on another mix, say stream mix or something like that, you would then be adding in your gain. So then bringing in the level up. So it was at a decent level. And that is when you can start, you know, 
firing this compressor in because I, I don't even know where I'd have to go to make this kick in, maybe minus 28. And, um, you know, really bring that attack down. Maybe the ratio, but as you can, you know, it's making some tonal changes, but it's not kicking in here. I mean, I'd, you, you really have to drop the attack down to get it to kick in. So that is why you want to, you know, add that in later. In, in my opinion, I would only be using that one for when you're live streaming and adding in more gain. So I've just added in the tube compressor, nothing heavy, just a, you know, maybe a light tonal change. Um, the gate. Probably should have gone this from left to right um, when I showed it. The gate, I would always recommend that you use an expander. So a gate is is only going to be, you know, open, closed. I always forget which way around, but it's only going to be working when you're not talking. Do you know what I mean? Because you set your level, so it's going to cut out stuff like maybe some PC sounds, um, maybe that iPad sound that just went off there, um, you know, aircon units and all of that stuff. But it's only when you're not talking. So when when you're talking, it's still going to be there. Your voice is going to you know, be in front of that, but it's still going to be present in the background. You're still going to be able to hear it. OK, what an expander does is it takes that noise floor that's always there and just brings it down. OK, um, so, you know, that's that's what I prefer to use. And th this is a good way how you can actually get away with not having to buy a fat head or a cloud lifter or any of that stuff, because you set it to a level where, you, you know, your preamp hisses and you bring it down. OK. So do you need a fat head with this? Probably not. I mean, I, I tested out with my fat heads and a few other bits and bobs, and I don't really find a massive, you know, a massive use for one at the moment. Um, so I really like this tube compressor as well. Adds in some gain. Um, what would I change? Oh, there's a limiter as well, which you don't need on. Again, you might want this on when you do stream mixing. I think the biggest problem and the biggest killer for everyone, okay, is there's no deesser. No deesser. There is a DSO compressor, but all that's, all that's really doing is a key filter. That's all it does. It just changes the key filter. So you, you would adjust it to where your S's are, but then you lose a lot of the other bandwidth and stuff that, you, you know, where you'd want to be compressed. So it needs a DSO. You know, this is the thing. I don't know how maxed out the DSP is on this device. You know, I, I'm not a personas engineer. OK, personally, I would. I would be happy if you could just exchange stuff. So it says, okay, if you want the Deessa, Troy, you want the Deessa, you have to get rid of your voice effects. Good, get them gone. I'm not going to use them. Do you know what I mean? And again, you know, the ability to add even more compressors and more EQs, even if freeze the limit, you can remove one and add it. You know, you can install it. Even if you want to sell us, you know, these, because these are essentially almost VSTs that we've got on here. And that would be fantastic to add all of this. So I love the fat channel. I mean, there's no, there's no other audio interface that's doing it like Presonus with this at the moment, but um, for me it's not it's not perfect. Okay, um, I think I've got too much peak production on there. Let's just uh, dial that back a little bit there. Um, that yeah, it's not perfect. Okay, you can also swap the EQ and compressor around, which is pretty decent, pretty decent. But yeah, I'd love to see adding some more. I know a DS is a big one, but it might be because of DSP. TC Helicon said that the Go XLR Mini didn't have a DSA because of um, hardware limitations. I think that it was a paywall limitation and that they wanted to sell you a more premium device because, um, you know, a DSA is a very big thing to a lot of people. So let's talk about the mixer then because the mixer is awesome. I love this. I love the mixer. Four mixes here. What do they all do? I'm not going to go super in depth because I've already made videos on this. OK, talking about all the loopbacks and focusing just on the mixers. So we're going to briefly go over it and then where would I improve it? Where would I change this? OK, so four mixes. First one is your main mix. This is the headphone mix. Only I can hear this. You can't hear it. OK, I mute this one now. It's still coming through. There's still recording coming through. I can't hear anything. Great. I can mute my mic. Two channels here. You can also combine them. I don't know if I'm going to compress that one right now because I don't know if that will change anything up. But you can combine these into a left and right by pressing that one there. 48 volts of phantom power. You can pan it. You know, if I add in gain here now, that's only adding gain in my headphones. OK. You then have your playback and they're now called virtual A and virtual B. Loop back one and loop back two. Before we progress, I will show you what all of those inputs are when it wants to load. So for playback, so 
virtual output A and virtual output B, okay, are these two that come in here. So if you set something to that, maybe it's a game, Spotify, whatever, that would then start playing on virtual output A and virtual output B, okay. Now the recording ones, mix B, mix C, there's mix A actually. So when you engage stream mix, that engages mix A, loopback one is mix B, and loop back to is mix C. Okay, so we'll, we'll go. For, we're going to come back to all of this sort of stuff. So the stream mix sense. So we're we're going to engage stream mix, and then we're on mix A. Okay, and I was only really focusing in the original videos that you would only have two of these that you're coming in, but you could also send your playback to it. So if I just say let's go on one of my. As you can see, there's audio playing. I'm not going to play it for you on screen there, but then that is our playback stuff. This is now being directly sent out to our stream mix. Okay. You're not going to hear it right now, but check out the loopback video if you want, you want to go into this more, more depth. What if we change it then? So if I then went to, say we wanted our system audio, I'm looking around my microphone, virtual output A. And there you can see now it's coming out virtual output A and B. Okay, so you can use that in the Windows Mixer. You can customize it to what you want. I focused on it only having two, so that's a big scoreboard error on my account that you could have free and then you can adjust this. So in your headphone mix, you know, you're going to want things louder. You want your game sound louder, you know, and you might decide that you want to mute your microphone because you don't you don't want to listen to yourself the whole time. Then on your stream mix, you can customize everything, how you want it to go out. You know, what level do you want your music? What level do you want your game? You know, your mic, you know, making sure that you're in front of the mix and, you know, and on top of it. So you can do all of that stuff. Now, these ones, the great thing about loopback one and loopback two, these are our mix B and mix C. OK. So this is stuff that you would send to Discord, Teams, maybe you're doing web hosting. You know, if you're doing a podcast, but you're doing it remotely together and one of you is streaming it back out, you're probably not going to want to send people on Discord your game sound because they're playing the same game as you. OK, but you might want to send them some music. You know, if you were doing a, like I said, a remote podcast, there may be a video that you're showing your audience, but you need your guest to be able to hear the at least hear the audio if they're not seeing it at the same time. So you can comment on it together. And that is where you send these ones. OK, so these ones is what you send to Discord, Teams, all of that sort of stuff. And you get two of them and then you can customize them to suit. OK, a couple of things that's worth noting then. So when you're on this main mix here, if I press mute, that is going to mute me now because this is a mix we're sending out to record. OK, all right. You know, this is going to adjust all of our gain. This here this then is how you add your gain. So this is why you want to record lower. And then on the stream mix, you would then add in all of your makeup gain and all of the stuff that you need there. OK, and your fat channel is still going to apply on it. So there's the mixer then. Awesome stuff. I absolutely love it. And I know if this is the first time you've watched any videos on the Revelator that might sound confusing a little bit on the loopback, there'll be a link in the description to my loopback videos. I've, I've already done two, so <laughs> I didn't really want to do a bulk of another one with with loads of loopback. But. I love this, but I think there should be some changes to the mixer. So one thing that really annoys me is that when you adjust just a slider, any app that I've ever used, you just double click it and it would go back to zero. Apparently, if you hold alt, it does it. Someone mentioned ah, it, it worked that time. OK, so you can press alt on the keyboard, but still, still that works. It didn't work the other day, but thank you to the user, that um, the, uh, the commenter that told me about that little option there. So if you press alt, it will go back to zero. But... You know, I just want to double click it and it goes back to zero. That's what I would change. Obviously, you have sort of got free loopbacks if you're outputting your main output in, which should be enough. You could do game, music and discord. Maybe you want more. Quite often when you're streaming, a lot of your stuff is going to be in mono. So I would love the ability to split these loopback channels into mono like you can split the headphones. If that's a possibility, that'd be great. But other than that, that's about it for the mixer. For me, obviously, there's reverb as well, which I didn't cover because I don't really use it. But fantastic. I love all of this. You can monitor everything different that you have your main mix, that you have a stream mix that you can send out. This one click button doesn't mess around with anything. Loopbacks, multiple loopbacks in and out, um, all the stuff. Once you've got it all set up, this is an awesome, awesome interface. OK. So there we go then. Um, there's all the software, you know, all the great features, all the little tweaks that I would like to change. Um, you know, if you have any of your own ideas, you know, I really want to know your ideas in the comment section as well. Um, if there's something that I haven't covered, I've got quite a few videos on this and, you know, I've been quite quick to respond as well in the comment section. Just give me a shout. And if a lot of you are asking the same questions, I will make a video. That's just what Troy does. So the headphone issue then, well, I did have a, um, you know, someone was commenting about their issues. 
um, with the headphone and, you know, I was trying to troubleshoot it with him. From there, I've then gone and read, you know, some of the stuff that they've put on the Personas forums, all of that sort of stuff. But I only got these MDR 756s the day before I made the software part of this video. So with the DT990 250 ohms, and a lot of people recommend to use 250 ohm headphones with this audio interface, I didn't notice the apparent issues. And then from researching it, I noticed that there were some other issues as well that were also part of the problem and part of the problem with this audio interface. So yeah, when I plug these in, there is just like this swirling, whirling sound um, in the background, okay? And, you know, I don't think saying, well, just go and buy 250 ohm headphones is a, you know, good enough, you know, thing. It's like something that I can suggest where it won't happen. But if you already own a lower pair, you know, a lower impedance pair of monitor headphones, you shouldn't have to go out and spend 130 pounds to use them with your audio interface, which just cost you 170. That just shouldn't be an issue. And a lot of it comes down to grounding. And this is another issue that I've had as well. And I will show you this. These were the issues that I was having pre before having an interview for what was going to look like, you know, what's good, what could be a dream job. Let me just turn the noise gate off. And that is me now touching the boom arm. Bear me a second. And I'm touching the end of the mic there. Can you hear all of that? So, you know, a lot of that you're going to say, you know, it's grounding issues, um, you know, with the setup. And it could be, okay, there's a lot of stuff in front of me here, multiple monitors, PCs, lightings, all the little RGB lights and little things that you like to add in. There's always been a little bit of interference, you know, just a little something that I've been able to hear in any audio that I've recorded where I could say that's just a little bit of noise. Maybe it's a little bit of rewiring. You know, I could hear it on my Focusrite Claret. I could hear it on my Audient Evo 4, but just very minor, tiny, minute stuff when you've really boosted the audio up, okay? And it was something that was easily to remove. There's been times where this has been present over everything, even with the, you know, the um, expander turned on. Um, I was actually playing Battlefield 2042 beta this weekend and um, it crapped out on me like two or three times. I switched to a 48 volt, um, you know, a 48 volt condenser microphone for a little bit. And then that went all weird and haywire as well. So, you know, part of this I know is down to wiring, but it is also, you know, from reading and reading the issues with this is that there seems to be a grounding issue on both the USB and the headphone jack. That is just not good enough. And it's hard because this is such a fantastic product and it's got so much potential and I've been highly recommending it. And I do apologize to anyone that's gone out and bought it and then had these headphone issues. I obviously couldn't hear it with my headphones that I was using. You know, I didn't know. And it's weird. I don't think it's just about low impedance because my X2HRs that I plug in don't suffer from it either. They're 32 ohm headphones. These are 64. You know, it's, it's a weird thing. Um, so I am going to be making a separate video on it. Um, one of the things I'm going to be putting in is a power conditioner anyway. And I'm not blaming personas for that. That's something that I always knew that I was going to buy at some point anyway, that I was going to, uh, you know, replace all my plugs with power conditioners. But I've been unplugging everything that you could. I've been isolating it away from as many wires that I could find. And it's still there. Um, you know, I sat in the, um, you know, in the rest of my lounge backs onto this room. I plugged it into my MacBook Air, um, the M1 version, just the audio interface and took this mic over there and there was still weird issues. It's not the mic cables. I've got enough, you know, I had enough audio gear to test that I would know it's, you know, if it's the cables. But there's some weird issues going on. You know, yes, my setup isn't optimum and the cables isn't optimum. All right? Anyone that's thinking, you know, wanting to suggest, you know, you need to rewire everything. Yes, that is part of it. But it wasn't happening with any of my other audio gear. And there's, there's quite a few things under my monitors as well. You know, I have amplifiers and DACs and all this stuff, and they don't have to suffer from any interference issues, okay? My audio interfaces didn't. None of my Behringer gear that I got, you know, any of that outboard gear, it didn't suffer from it, okay? We're all still using the same cables and wires. So, you know, that is a problem there, and it's a shame. It is a real shame because this is a fantastic product. I don't know what they do to... To, to fix that you know i don't think it's available by you know to be fixed by a firmware i feel it needs a hardware addressing and i feel like i'm running a little bit at the end of this video here but yeah it's just hard you know I'm, I'm, I'm sorry you know i feel bad in a way that because i've been really plugging this product the past few months um and i still you know like i said it's still great and if you get it to work it's fine but 
there is variables and i don't think you know buying stuff because you're buying it all new and you know these headphones are optimal for it that's okay but like i said you know you might have already spent almost 100 pound on a pair of headphones maybe within the last year or maybe even five years ago but they still work you shouldn't have to go and buy other bits to go with it we know you need to buy cables and stuff but yeah it's a bit weird but with the gate on it's fine you know because it you know the the um what is it the expander is expanding it down but definitely some weird issues going on there um and there are some st other things that i'm going to order to try and fix it outside of the power conditioners it looks like i've got to spend maybe 70 80 pounds um so i'm going to make a video about that um we can talk about it all i'm sending this video over to personas anyway um, but software wise, like I said, fantastic. Love it. You know, like I said, I'd love to see the ability to add extra stuff in. You know, the DSR is definitely a big one for a lot of people, especially people that are using condenser mics. Um, and even, you know, sometimes if you've got a very sibilant voice, this is, I would say, <laughs> up there on the cusp of, you know, being too sibilant at times, the um, Electro Voice RE320. But yeah, there we go. There's the review. I'll stop my end of the video waffle. Um, hopefully this has helped you with your purchasing decision. Um, like I said, I will be making a separate video where we can address some of those problems. Do go check out the forums, um, check out people's posts on Reddit. People are sharing, you know, all of their findings and, you know, how's getting this the most optimal, what headphones they're using and all of that stuff. You know, we shouldn't have to do all this stuff. Um, I should probably shut up about it now, but hopefully it gets resolved soon. Um, definitely make sure you go and check out Skillshare. Um, massive shout out to them as well. I'm going to leave it at that today. Thank you very much. Um, and I'll see you all very soon.